Alright, so I'm going to show you how to um, do one of my impressionist landscapes on a canvas that has been primed yellow ochre. It's my favorite color for backgrounds. So I have my palette here. Yours probably won't look like this. This has been well used actually. And I've got chalk. I sometimes use this, especially if I am like, well, when I was sort of just starting out, I used a lot of chalk. Chalk is good on acrylic, which is the paint I'll be using. This little guy. <laughs> so, uh, the way that I have my canvas right now is called portrait style. Uh, you can do yours. Landscape. So some of the things I'm going to be including in this piece is the moon, a mountain, a bear, a tree. It'll be like a, a classic PNW type scene, uh, but it'll all sort of be in a perspective form, so it'll be like, start with the moon, which is gonna be in the middle, something like that, it's like super whimsical. So if you have some lines that you want to get rid of, you can just dip your finger, or uh, if you have a cloth. So everything's going to be going sort of in a shape around the moon. So I'm going to put mountains in. So there's my mountains. I'm going to start with the trees that are sort of far away, just scouted them around. When I do a tree, I usually just do like, map them out. Where am I going to put my trees? All I'm kind of doing is going back and forth, one side to the other side, one side to the other side. But all trees are different, so you can do like, branches going up, and then down. You can do no branches. They're gonna be way up like that. So they sort of frame the whole picture in a way. And then I'm just gonna, maybe one tree will be falling. Oftentimes when I'm painting, I kind of picture I'm out into, in like, in nature. Like I'm actually looking out. Like I'm pretending I'm there, which is really a good way to know what you're going to put down. This guy's just going to have sort of twigs. This guy will be bushy. Poor girl. Do trees have genders? And then, so that's just like the base. So don't worry just yet. You can always add in more details later on. I'm going to do my bear. Bears are like dogs with big heads that are circular. <laughs> and they're furry. One thing I like to do when I'm painting is to keep things really symmetrical or like a balanced unsymmetry. So I've done sort of this weird Y. It kind of looks like an IUD. <laughs> but it's actually the shape of this. I always start with that shape. Um, that's like the bridge of the nose and his little eyes or her little eyes. Are you so they also have big foreheads. Which is nice, I can relate to that. <laughs> it's like I'm almost doing another V, or I mean another like IUD here. <laughs> like, you can start with a circle. I kind of always do something different every time. Um, then they have cute little ears that are usually pretty, pretty small in comparison to their body. There's a really basic bear. Um, you can do a more detailed version once you have the, once you're using the actual paint. My bear's going to be sitting with his paws out and then his back feet are going to be sort of coming out of the sides. Claws. Don't worry if it's all uneven, you can always fix that later on too. And then you can do the back paws, the actual bottom of the foot and then the claws are so I'm not looking at a photo of a bear right now. Sometimes I look at photos, sometimes I don't. It's totally up to you. You can always pull up one on your phone of a bear looking cute. Maybe you want to do a fox. It's totally up to you.
but bears are super cute. I'm gonna go ahead and do the sketch of the bear. Um, you're totally welcome to do your own sketch of a bear. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Freedom is yours. I'm gonna add some wild strawberries and uh, lavender because they're great. That's kind of the beauty of painting. You can sort of make stuff up in your own mind, which, and sometimes you just have to trust yourself. Okay, so there's my little lavenders. I might do one like close up. And another one just to make it symmetrical. Then I'm gonna do some wild strawberries. So close up ones. Color them in red. And then they're kind of curly. So the red marks are just sort of indications of where um, where the strawberries will sit. Okay. So there's a really basic, simple representation of what your painting will transform into. If you're wearing like fancy clothes um, and you want to cover up, you can wear an apron or you can just be a ninja and not get any paint on you. So trees are generally green. I have some different greens here. I have a viridian green color here. Forest green sort of color there. Sort of a lighter green version of that. Blue is a really nice one. Doing a green tree, I'll usually use anywhere from blue, green, to yellow. I'm going to start with my trees that are farthest away. So think about um, the light that is coming off of this moon here will reflect onto some of the trees. So you're going to have your darks sort of going, for, sort of framing it in a way. There we go, there's some blue. So I'll probably just go ahead and do a little squiggly bits around. Of course it will be darker on one side of the tree than the other. So I'm already starting the uh, form of this tree. If you notice the way my um, hands are moving, it's sort of like a Sort of like a spaz attack in a way. Spazzing. Okay, so I've started on one side and now I'll do the other side. Okay, so now that I've filled in both sides, I'm going to go ahead and add in all my little details down here. It'll probably be dark down in these corners too. So that's a, as much blue as I'm going to do right now. So always wash your brush when you're not using it. So there's my next color up. Which is doing is I'm kind of spinning the brush so I'm pretty much just adding little green blobs to the uh, st vertical sticky up bits maybe there's some moss growing on this tree it's always fun to make up your own uh, ideas. So this style that I'm painting gives the trees a lot of movement. They see that I, the movement on my brush and I'm actually working quite fast. Okay. Next I'm going to take my titanium white and the white will bring a nice light color. The cool color coming off of the moon. I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and add some brown. Brown! This will be for the tree stump. You can always mix a little bit of white with your brown too. That gives it nice texture. Maybe I have a stump that's fallen. Just chilling. We have one on the other side, way right over there. And here. Just to balance out that side. And then once you add the brown, you can add red. I'll wash my brush. And the red, I'm not going to overdo it. I'm just going to put a little bit here and there. Don't forget about earrings, fallen trees. So now I'm going to go back in with a purpley blue color. That is, so there's the blue, and then there's the purple blue. So I put the dark purple in here to sort of indicate the darker, depthier spots in the forest. This will also be a good uh, base for the mountain, which we're going to have sort of a purpley color. You see how I'm leaving a lot of the yellow? Um, you can always go back in and cover some of it up, but I'm just doing that for now, just lightly. different purples. They might have a light purple, sort of a ashy light purple, a dark purpley blue, and a sort of warmer purple. So I've chosen also a smaller brush to get into the details. And I'm just gonna start washing it in. Leave a little bit of space at the top because that's gonna be where we put some white on the mountain. Let's see warmer purple, sort of mix it in there. Like sporadically. I chose purple because it makes the mountains look far away. And then you can start adding some darker. Okay, and you can take some of your white. Notice how much is on my brush, like I'm really glooping it on. Add some little dots. So your dark is going to be sort of down the bottom and it'll get lighter and lighter like a gradient. Just fill in any of the yellow that you don't really want to be shining through. It's true now that I've uh, done this side, I'm just going to go ahead and do the other side in that same sort of style. So now that I've filled in my mountains. So now that I've filled in my mountains, I'm going to do my favorite part, which is the sky. I really, really like this part. This is where the fun starts. To start my sky, I'm going to use uh, these three colors. I've got this uh, dark blue, dark purple, and sort of a blood red. I'm going to start by darkest colors in the corner. And then as I work my way towards the moon, it'll get lighter and lighter and lighter. Starting with my red. Do the outer edges. Okay, then I'm gonna switch to my purple.
And then I'm going to use this dark blue. And don't worry if you have a bit of the canvas coming through, that's all good. It sort of adds to it. And you're just working a circle around the moon. Don't worry if it's uneven. Okay, so then once you put your dark colors in, you can start to incorporate some white. Now see, I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, and it's starting to create the the f motion of the sky. Add some water. I'm going to put in some of that light purple. The pale purple. Even take some dark again and work it into it. Okay, add a little bit more white. Now I'm going to get some lighter blues incorporated. Reflection. Lighter tone blue. A sort of baby white blue. And one of my favorite colors, turquoise. Yay! Wash your brush. Wipe your brush. Okay. That's nice. Don't be afraid to use lots. So you're basically just going to work this sky in until it starts to move all together. So the closer you get to the moon, the lighter the colors you want to use. Now make sure you leave a little bit of the, the uh, yellow along the mountain, because it gives a really nice glow. I'm going to take some dark. Then basically you're just going to blend it until you're happy with it. You might be happy with it like this, or you might want to keep working it. Just don't get too caught on it. So I'm basically working in the dark, then the light, and then if I still want to keep going, I'll work the dark back in, just back and forth, until you're happy. Now I'm sort of blending them all together. Don't forget to take a step back and look, see if you're happy. So now I'm going to do my moon using just white for now, and I've also got a smaller brush. Don't worry if it looks messy, because it kind of looks cool when it's messy. Okay, now I'm going to bring a bit of this sky into the background there. So you think about the glow behind the moon is sort of where it's coming off of. Okay. I'm going to add some yellow. This is a really light yellow. I'm going to add this on the outside edges of my moon. start adding some yellow around the moon. Sort of to create like a moon dog feeling. Water. And take a 
setback. So I'm just adding colors depending on how I feel about it. Uh, I'm going to give the mountains a bit of an aura, so just make sure your mountains are dry enough. And I'm just going to get a nice watery white. Super watery. I'm just making it right on my palette there. Use my white and flick it upwards. Here you can go along. And you can start adding sort of like shooting stars around. Okay, now I'm going to put in some stars. So I'm going to take my small brush, maybe even bigger, so there's my middle. And you don't have to do your uh, stars like this, you can always just do little dots here and there. You can even use the other end of your brush, say if you just want to do dots, maybe I'll put some out here. Dot. Or a really cool trick, make little spray stars. Okay, now I'm going to switch to this yellow. I'm going to do some stars in this medium blue. So once you're happy with your amount of little dots, then you can move on. So we're going to start on the uh, wild strawberries now. I'm going to go with my darkest red first. So I'll have one close up here and maybe one close up there. White. Light from the moon will definitely be hitting top of this strawberry. So I'm going to do the flowers now. So I'll just go ahead and put on all my flowers. put the little tops on my strawberries. So using a light green Okay, and now I'm going to switch to a dark green again and I'm going to do my leaves that are farther away are obviously going to be smaller. These are blades of grass. With that same dark green. Not too much because we want to add the lavender too next while we wait for this dark green to dry. And lavender is super easy. It's just like a bunch of little back and forth. Sort of like a braid. Do some ones in behind. Let's 
So now I'm going to take my dark blue and I'm going to do some darker leaves. Also do it in between the lavender a little bit. I'm getting dark ones in behind here. Especially down in this bottom and in these corners. Maybe there's two stems going the way. I'm just going to fill in these yellow spots basically to give the depth. Now I'm going to do some light green. Keep adding little details of twigs and branches and leaves and green stuff. So the closer we get to where the bear is going to be, the lighter it'll be, so it'll be darker around these edges. Color it in. This sort of makes it look like a field or something. take some blue and add some texture. Okay, so I'm going to take my really thin detail brush. I'm just going to go in and sort of add the light to everything. So basically you're just thinking about where the light is hitting. If you really want to do detail, you can do the actual leaf. Okay, now go ahead and detail some more if you like, or depending on how detailed you want it, you don't have to, but it looks cool the more details you add, just don't get too lost in it. Now I'm going to add some black just as a filler. There's his little mouth. You know, bears are have a lot of flabby skin, so usually their fur's in sort of a roll motion where it's like in waves, sort of ripples. And then the ears. So that's the inside of them. I always wanted to see one of these bears. Basically you go from the darkest color to the lightest and then you can always go it back in and add black. And I'm going to add a bit of white. Try to work your brush the same direction as his hair goes. The hair 
usually gets really long around their legs and chest area. I'm going to do the little back legs. With some black. So basically I'm just going to work this bear until I'm happy with it. Alright, so the last color I'm going to add is this beautiful turquoise, which I used in the sky. I like to bring the colors of the sky down into the foreground, just so it looks like it's reflecting and it also balances the painting out. And to some of the trees too. So you can even detail some of your stems a little bit more. So once you're uh, pretty happy with your painting, you're allowed to stop right there, or you can add even more detail and go in with a smaller brush, which is what I usually do. I'm going to go ahead and do that, but you're totally welcome to keep it like that, and it'll be a impressionist piece. Like that. Congratulations, you finished!